What is up and welcome to the underground. It is Ned joined by Lachlan Watt from Melbourne at Metal Outfit Run. Lachlan, how are you, man? Thank you for taking time out. I'm um, really good, Ned. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Appreciate it. Oh, um, man, I appreciate you taking time out. And your story is such a unique one, Lachlan. You've overcome some severe difficulties to get to where you're at now. But before we get onto all of that, man, can you let me know about your, you've just wrapped up a tour with Honest Crooks, yeah? Yeah, so I, I work for a label called EVP Recordings and I signed Honest Crooks several years ago now and they had a lot of uh, delays in getting their record out and uh, we finally got it out last month and celebrated with a 10-show tour across the country. I think it was like eight eight or seven shows for Crooks and it ended up being 10 in total with Cruelty, this band from Japan that came out and supported them on all the dates and did a few headline shows of their own. So. Yeah, I burnt myself out on the road for uh, two weeks in a van across Australia. It had been a long time since I'd done a tour like that, but it was a lot of fun. Glad I'm still able to do it. Still good for me. That's really nice there. And tell us about EVP Recordings then. You're the master behind mine behind that? No, I was uh, was hired to kind of take over the daily operations of it about five or six years ago. My boss, uh, a man named Mike Lenton, who works for a, a distribution company called Rocket Distribution. And we're like a really large, I think it's the largest in Australia, like independent physical like record CD distributor in the country. We supply like all the record stores and look after heaps of big labels for all their Australian physical distribution. And I guess just as a passion project, he started this EVP recordings thing to, to put out some Australian metal stuff that he was into from bands like the Amenta, King Parrot, Psychroptic. Uh, he licensed uh, some Behemoth records to put nice. out through it. and uh, But then he kind of yeah wanted the label to do something a bit more with some younger bands and hired me to sort of start steering the ship in, I think, 2017. And I my first signing was Pagan. And from there, I sort of did a whole bunch of other stuff. Most recently, Honest Crooks and Freedom of Fear and Zeolite. Oh, nice. So the, the label seems to be sort of moving along nicely there. You're a jack of many trades, man. You're like head yeah. vocalist and run, running your own a record label, a radio announcer. Is there anything that you don't do? Uh, um, I, I don't know. Not to be too self-deprecating, but probably like nail any one of those things 100%. <laughs> I, just, I just consider myself a jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> I said always that like 10 today, different things today. going on. 10 different things going on at any given time. So yeah, yeah. it's good. Like my attention span and it's just like, I'll jump from one thing to the next and it all sort of feeds into each other. It's all part of the same sort of, uh, what would you call it? Like um, ecosystem in the of, yeah. of music and everything. It also, it all sort of, it, it all helps each other, helps the other out that I'm involved in like one area and the other, you know, so like helping a band put a record out and then because I do the touring stuff, I can, help them with that stuff as well and then because i'm so involved in all of that it helps me sort of stay on top of what's happening so i can like be current with my playlists and then all of that also ties in nicely with having a band and being able to get on shows and know what, what bands to play with and who's doing what so yeah yeah, for sure, one hundred percent, right there. And like, let's rewind back to the start, then, Lachlan. Why, why did you choose metal and and this side of music? Um, I don't know if I could give like a specific, clear answer to that. It was just the, I don't know. I got when I first got into metal when I was like fifteen, sixteen. It just really grabbed me by the balls, and just like yeah. was the first thing I'd sort of musically like because i'd been involved as a like a, a musician and through all throughout school playing like trumpet and piano and stuff and having like a bit of a musical education but i had no real interest in pursuing any of that beyond high school and then uh towards the end of high school sort of started getting into heavy music and it just kind of sparked something in me that just sort of was like hey this is how i feel this is sick yeah. and i wanted to be involved in it yeah, I love that right there, man. You've been in a plethora of bands, yeah? Like, how many bands to date have you been in? You're like, I was studying up on you and it was like a ton. Um, I guess it would depend, like, if you count all the bands I've filled in for or not, but yeah. all up at least 10. 
Yeah, that is crazy right there. And I, I guess that sort of leads us into run now. You, you've you got those together through a, a very trying time. Can you tell us about the evolution of run and how you got the band together there? So um, talking about being in all sorts of bands, like I'd been in a band called Colossus for a while after I, cause I grew up in Brisbane, moved to Melbourne about seven or eight years ago, joined a band called Colossus death metal band and then that is murder sort of tapped me on the shoulder to come and fill in for them yeah and that sort of led to colossus sort of falling apart at the time and i went around and toured for thy art for six months and then came back to not really having a band and tried to get something of my own going again and then psychroptic hit me up to do a similar thing and i toured around with them singing for them for several months and uh tried tried to kind of do colossus again when i got back from psychroptic and it just didn't really didn't really take a second time around there's too much trauma and drama there and so then i was like all right i really gotta just start something of my own and uh kind of just I, like this guy mike deslin's he's an amazing producer guitarist he's been in high tension ilva coerce he's made a whole bunch of sick records he's recorded basically or been involved on some level whether it was tracking or mixing or just at his old studio any band i've been in before that had like made a record i mike had been involved in it and he sort of knew knew my voice inside out knew what i was trying to do and i just kind of hit him up with a proposal like how about i pay you as a producer to help me sort of translate these ideas into something real Mm. and yeah so we we cooked up a little five track ep started started that in um must have been maybe it was late 2018 uh or maybe it was just because i think we we must have recorded it in 2019 and uh then sort of just before the recording was done i got hit with uh a brain cancer diagnosis and that really put everything on the sidelines for the rest of the year and then going into the pandemic kicking off in 2020 it was like all right i gotta get through this uh chemotherapy and then i can finally do my band and then the pandemic sort of happened in the final months of chemo and it was just like fuck so then yeah we just sort of just went fuck it and put out the record in i think must have been may 2020 anyway and uh sat back and just waited for uh the coast to clear to you know play some shows and get together a live lineup because we just did the record as just us two and a session drummer and then went through building multiple lineups that would kind of come and go because we had all these we'd have all these shows booked and then that all get cancelled because that was what was happening all 2021 for tours and like all the Melbourne kept going back into lockdown and shows just kept like disappearing into thin air. And so it was just like basically the hardest start to a band I could possibly imagine. And yeah, then yeah. finally in 2022 was able to sort of get together a good team of guys and uh, get things moving and play, started playing some sick shows and finally started working on some new stuff. And then, we had to put it all on hold again because they thought my cancer had come back. So I had to get another surgery and then it turned out it was just scar tissue that was like rapidly overgrowing or whatever in my head and not actually the cancer coming back. So I'm not going to say it was like a pointless surgery because it's sort of in that case, it was be- best better to be safe than sorry. But I definitely felt pretty hard done by and we had to cancel a whole bunch of plans all over again. And during that time, a couple of the guys I had playing in the, in the band got really busy with their other band, Terminal Sleep. And so then when I sort of came good again a few months later and it was like, all right, I'm ready to do stuff again, they were like, sorry, man, we've got too much else going on. Uh-huh. And I was like, yep, yeah, fair enough. So then we found, found another couple of guys and ultimately I think it was for the best because they don't have other projects that they're like, that's taking the priority and they've just fit in really well. And one of the guys, Aaron, he's just like pumping out, been pumping out new stuff. And we just put out finally a new single last month and got another one coming next month. And we're working on the next record at the moment and have a whole bunch of shows coming up. And it feels like finally the band is real and moving after what, three, four years of trying to push shit uphill. 
yeah, just obstacle after obstacle sort of mm. thing there, Lachlan. And I was going to ask you, man, like being diagnosed with the, with brain cancer is absolutely horrible. I've had friends go through similar and it's just, it's just such a hard thing. How did you stay motivated and, and, and push through it all? Especially like if you, like you were saying too, you add in the COVID lockdowns and everything with COVID, COVID in general, it was just a horrible time. And you've got that on top of this. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know, man. Like, I, it's kind of like, I don't really feel like I had a choice. It was like, yeah, I knew what I wanted to be doing and I, it's what I sort of had to do. And I wasn't going to let anything stop me. And I'd sort of maybe liken it to, you know, when you're in the surf and you get hit by like a real heavy wave. Yeah. And if you try and like fight it, you're just going to end up swallowing a whole bunch of water and get hurt. But if you just kind of go with it, you'll make it to the shore and you'll be okay. Yeah, I'll, I like that for sure, man. And like you were saying to the new song, everyone, everyone's cancelled, everything's cancer, man. I love it. I've been bumping that one flat out. We're leaving it all behind. That's all about like like basically what you've gone through, yeah, and you're pushing yeah. forward in 2023 uh, with a whole fresh new outlook, yeah? Yeah, I basically tried to sort of write a song that was about everything that had really like pissed me off about the last few years and just how society had behaved and like, and you know, all sides of like politics and stuff and social like viewpoints and everything, just how hyper-partisan everything had become and like it felt like just everyone was just at each other's throats for like three, two, three years. And I, I mm. myself was kind of guilty of getting a bit heated and getting a bit, taking a few things perhaps a bit too personally. And I don't know, it was just, uh, I tried to kind of bundle all of that up as well as my sort of medical experiences and frustrations with getting the band going, going in the first place, try to sort of just bundle all of that up into just one big fucking ball of venom just to like, spit out and just be like all right fuck you all this is done and we're <laughs> moving on now it definitely says that too man and the video <laughs> is very very much killer i, I love that man um Thanks, man. We... I'm glad yeah oh yeah for sure man we're gonna post that one up on the facebook page so be sure to check it out uh, and you said you've got more songs coming out soon yeah yeah we also recorded a uh a cover of iris by the goo goo dolls oh so we've been <laughs> we've been playing that live since uh like june last year and uh it's an idea i've had for a while because i think the song it's like a, it's an incredible song like i think most people like that song yeah. and it just really like hits all the hits all the emotional spots it really makes me feel something and um i just think it was sort of like it's it's, it's kind of a, like i it's funny it's interesting like when we first started figuring it out how to translate it into like run sound. I thought it was going to be like real easy. Like, Oh, it's just some sort of four, four rock song with just a simple chord progression. And turns out it's actually kind of a little bit more complicated than that. And there's some real obscure timing and like chords and stuff in there that you wouldn't pick up on just by, you know, hearing it on the radio. Yeah. So it is such an easy going song, but yeah, we sort of, we just, I guess made it like a post metal core version of it. And I, did a bunch of like really throaty melodic singing to go with it as opposed to my usual just screaming. There's a bit of screaming in there too, but it's a bit different for run. And it's got like, of course, lots of double kicks and blast beats and stuff. So it's like a, it's, it's really fun. And playing it live has been sick. Cause like when we played it at dark mofo, you just look up at the crowd halfway through the song and everyone's got their phones up with their lights and their cigarette <laughs> lights, just like waving it along. And we, we played a show in Brisbane in October last year. And there was a few dudes at the front who were like wearing like thy art is murder shirts and stuff, just like push pitting and going crazy for the whole set. And then we start playing that song and I look up and I see that they're like embracing and singing along at the top of their lungs. Like, ah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I think people, people are into it. It's really cool. It's different. And uh, yeah, we filmed a video for that one recently too. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think people will enjoy it. It's cool. It's different. Oh. It's like everything's everything's cancelled. Every every everyone's cancelled. Everything's cancelled. Is like us at run at its most extreme and dark and nihilistic. And then the next thing that's coming out is like the complete opposite end of that. Like a really emotional, really melodic, like more stripped back kind of touchy feely song. So yeah, it sort of represents both ends of the spectrum really well and moving on from that i think we, we've got to try and sort of channel all of those different energies into a, a, a another record whether or not that's going to be another another ep or a full length at this stage we're sort of 
umming and ahhing about currently, trying to weigh up our options, but we've got heaps of material on the table and demos that we've been working on. And I'm really excited to get back into the studio at least like by, you know, mid year at this rate, we're sort of hoping to be able to get into the studio and yeah, we'll have some new, new stuff coming early 2024, I'd say. Oh, there you go. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully like a, a big, a big chunk of material for everyone to enjoy. I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Is- yeah, that's awesome right there, Lachlan. And funny you bring up Iris and the Goo Goo Dolls. Having having never seen you guys live, I didn't know that you were, you know, playing that song. And the last interview I did was with a guy from Counterparts called uh, Brandon Murphy. And Brandon, he was talking, yeah, yeah. yeah I, talking I about that. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Really yeah, nice. Dude. Sure. That was his go-to song on karaoke. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's yeah. funny that you say that. Um, there you go. I'm looking forward to hearing that one, man. So when did you say we can expect that next month? Uh, we're just waiting for like the artwork and stuff to get finalized at this point, but I'm, we don't, so we don't have a release date yet, but we've got a whole bunch of shows happening in April and I want to get it out before then. So first or second week of April, we'll have it out. I'd say. Oh, there you go. So that's not too far off at all. Very much looking forward to that. You said there's a video too. We can look out for that. It's so awesome. Uh, I wanted to ask you, like we were saying before, you're a bit of a jack of all trades, metal vocalist. You're a DJ on Triple J. Uh, what defines success to you? Uh, enjoying life. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like having money and stuff is nice, but. Also, I, when I was in my like early twenties, I think like, cause I used to sort of work full time. Like, I think I dropped out of, of university when I was maybe like 19 or 20 or something, because I was working for a magazine, working for a venue. I had two bands on the go that were very busy and I was like, fuck uni. I don't need that. I'm yeah. doing what I want to do right now. And uh, everything was going well. And then, of course, all the bands break up. Like the magazine goes bankrupt. Someone else muscles in and takes over the venue job. And then it's like, all right, I guess I got to get a job. And so I went and started working full time in a call center. And I was making quite a bit of money, getting really good sales commissions and stuff. And uh, ultimately, I just wasn't really happy. And so I ended up going back to uni for a bit and still working in a different call center part time, start, started up some new bands and shit. And then, um, the triple J position came up and I applied for that job and jumped through all the hoops. And after several months of, of that, I got the job and, uh, was like, all right, I definitely don't need to keep studying or whatever and i think i'd already actually quit the call center that i had been into because i just had like a bit of a mental breakdown about it It was like i gotta go find myself another music job and went and like quit and went and found myself another job booking a venue like the next day and um i think it probably took about seven or eight years from there but through the process of like having multiple jobs in the industry and just kind of keeping at it all for so many years I eventually sort of made it to a point where I was making about as much money through having three or four different jobs in music as I had been in the, in the call center, like all those years prior. And that was for me at the time, that was a pretty satisfying sort of indicator of success, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I, I guess like just on that, what you're saying there, Lachlan, so you're working probably three or four times harder, but you're achieving the same. So you're sort of living the dream to get what you could have been being miserable, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would, uh, I'd rather be doing stuff that I think is cool and have less money than have more money and feel shit about it. Yeah. No. And I, I... Getting, getting to do stuff like play shows with like bands that really I- inspired you and made you feel a part of something and like understood when you were sort of coming of age and figuring yourself and the world out. That stuff is sort of the kind of success that keeps me going. Yeah, I love that right there, man. Very well uh, answered. All right, well, let's switch things up to you personally. What's something that might might sort of spin your people listening out to find out about you? Like, is there any surprising facts? Like, you're a big hardcore metal vocalist. Is there anything that's more like me bit out there about you? I don't know. I think I'm pretty public with basically everything, but uh, I've got 
a shitload of chickens in the backyard that I look after every day. And I saw that on the Instagram. Love it. Yeah. And it's kind of, I don't think people expect that from a, a metal guy. No, not really. <laughs> but yeah, every, every Tuesday when I go in for work at the radio, I bring in like a whole bunch of eggs and give everyone in the office like a six pack of eggs. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Way too many eggs to actually do anything with myself. Like I eat eggs almost every day, but I still can't get rid of them all. Damn, look out. Oh, that, that's awesome, man. And what's the latest sort of, or do you watch much TV, Netflix, that sort of thing? Have you checked anything out worth recommending? Um, Nothing like, I don't think I've seen anything that hasn't been like lately that hasn't been already part of the popular kind of dominant discussion. Yeah. Like, the last of us has been sick. Um, the, I think the best, best TV show I've seen in recent years, if not like ever would be Andor. The yeah. Star Wars show. I thought that was incredible. And, uh, I was a big fan of the Mandalorian. Well, I guess I still am, but even when the new Mandalorian episode premiered the other week, I found it kind of a little bit of a hard slog, a bit tough to kind of get into. Like really? it felt, felt a bit silly after Andor to me because Andor was just so dark and like, serious and deep and well thought out as opposed to like the Mandalorian is just like a kind of live action comic book and that's fine. And I hope that like, I'll start to kind of get back into it more as the episodes progress, but I almost feel like Andor was so good that it kind of ruined Star Wars for me a little bit. Wow. <laughs> it's make, making it a bit harder to enjoy all the, the other stuff. Like I usually would. That's a big call, man. I've actually got Mandalorian there. I'm, I'm ready to watch it, but I haven't watched the first episode yet. So that's going to be in the back of my mind when I when I finally get to <laughs> get to checking that out, man. All right. Well, who's some who, who would you ultimately like to work with in the music industry? I guess Lachlan on like a run record. Um, I'd love to do a record with Kurt Ballou from Converge God City Studios. I think he's done made a whole bunch of incredible albums and he'd he'd be killer to work with like we already worked with uh will putney on the mix for the first record so i guess it'd be cool to do something with him actually in person in the studio but uh yeah i don't know kurt blue would be i guess the 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 top tier bucket list producer that i think would be cool to do an album with one day Oh, that yeah, cool, man. That is awesome there. And no doubt the way things are going for you, I would say it would, you know, it'll be in the works soon. And we were talking a little bit about Star Wars just before. I was wondering, you're sort of of the same age bracket as me. Did you grow up on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Lachlan? Yeah, I, uh, I it's sort of like the, the one obsession I had as a kid that maybe didn't follow me into adulthood like Star Wars and Transformers did. But when I was a kid, I was very obsessed with Ninja Turtles. I had like a Leonardo costume and Apparently, my uh, parents convinced me at one point that the turtles actually lived under the, like the the manholes out on the street of our childhood home. Oh, uh, great parents! <laughs> <laughs> that's great. It's a, see, that's the one thing that sort of did follow me into adulthood, I guess. And I was going to say the new Seth Rogen ones. Definitely, the trailer for it came out today. Yeah, I, I saw that getting like, around on Twitter, and I, I hadn't got around to watching it yet, but it looked cool from what I saw man looks all sorts of awesome so that's my recommendation to you all right man um you've got the new single which is out now you've got a release party for the single coming up on friday that's all sorts of cool at last chance rock and roll bar in melbourne uh april yep. 8th coming up with earth caller what else do you have in the works lachlan uh we're going to um adelaide in i think april 15 to play the new dead metal fest with disentomb Hexus from Denmark, Alarm, Misery, Killat, uh, Battlegrave, a whole host of like sick Australian metal bands from all over the country, a band from Japan called Butcher ABC are playing as well. And then after our show on Friday, we're going to announce our, our next Melbourne show and I'm sort of working on a couple of other things at the moment. But uh, like I, I think after the last few years, I'm more uh, interested in just, and now that we've got, got to actually play a bunch of shows, it's sort of, it, and the, like, it's a whole new band of people that are all contributing to what we're doing. Even Like, even though we've only played like 11 shows so far with, you know, the songs that we have, they're kind of starting to feel a little bit redundant to me because it had been such a long process to bring them to the stage. And it's like, I'm yeah. 
singing about my state of mind four or five years ago now. And uh, I'm just more interested in working on the next record as opposed to committing to any kind of like, to, like crazy touring schedule for the time being. Like, of course, if something cool comes up, we'll look at all our options. We're not saying no more shows, but uh, after sort of this next batch of shows, we're going to maybe have a few little things here and there in Melbourne just to sort of try and make some money to help pay for recordings and things and keep us active and get the word out locally a little bit more because I feel like we sort of almost skipped the local band phase a little bit. Which in some yeah. ways, it's kind of just justified because I've done that with so many other bands before, but also I'd like to put in a little bit more work on that level and get a little bit more, put some more roots down in the in the local scene, play with some more local bands. But apart from that, uh, I'm mostly focused on wanting to get another record done. Yeah, and that's what we want to hear too is more new music from Run. That'd be yeah. cool. And if, if the last track's anything to go by, we're in for a treat. Very much looking forward to this Goo Goo Dolls cover as well. Yeah. Uh, caught me 100% off guard there, man. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out. You are an extremely busy man. Really appreciate it. Be sure to hit this guy up, Instagram.com slash Lachlan Watt, uh, Run underscore Metal. Be sure to check these guys out. They are all sorts of awesome. Lachlan, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ned. My pleasure. All the best.